Hey guys, how's it going? We're talking about Atlanta again. This is the third video I've made on the subject, so I'd recommend you watching the other two videos first, because uh, these those are kind of the building blocks of where we're at now. For those of you that just want the Cup Series data based on what they've done at Atlanta for the last four races, the last two years since this reconfiguration has happened, I'll get that and cover that right off the bat in this video, so if you're just here for that, we can focus on that. Uh, if you are familiar with the other two videos, you know that we're kind of looking at older races, 20-year-old uh, data, and stuff like that. I also want to put out, I've already heard one person talk about it, but I've been talking about this since the reconfiguration happened, uh, kind of like Tuco Salamanca in, in Better Call Saul, when he's uh, talking to, what's his face, Hector, uh, in the wheelchair, he's like, I put you in the wheelchair. Every time you're in the nursing home, think of me. I put you there, okay? So, like, same thing here. Whenever you, if, if anybody says anything like mid-2000s Daytona, IROC Racing, old-style Daytona, or anything like that, mm, you think of me. That's where they got that from. I got to take my victory somewhere because uh, I know other guys are watching this stuff. Anyway, just wanted to say that as we go ahead and, and look into the previous Atlanta races, I have to think... ACS204, a guy who has been a member of my Patreon for several years, he followed me over to uh, Trudy FS, and he, and he subscribes and he uses his projections, but he helps me uh, dig up a lot of this information that I just don't have time to do or access to or whatever the case may be, so thank you very much. Uh, if you guys are in the Discord, you've kind of already talked to him, if you, uh, you've seen uh, him active and everything like that. Uh, but anyway, so he, he put this together so I could do this, and he put together all the uh, the old all these old pulled videos or these old pull rate these old races pulled uh, and everything so I could make these videos a lot easier so I don't have to spend hours and hours and hours doing it on my own he did this and, and yada 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 when we look back at the four Atlanta races here as I've said we're really working with three and a half races so we got like three and, and one little nub race because this one was rain uh, shortened last year the other three races the first one is like a and, and I don't know, man. There's a lot going on with all these. First one was like, everybody was like, what the heck is this track? We're going to kill people. This is like the motor domes or like the uh, the old like wooden tracks that they used to race motorcycles on and like the 10s and, and the 1920s and stuff like that. Like people had no idea how this was place was going to race. And so there's a lot of people who made mistakes. Uh, a lot of people raced differently, yada, yada, yada. And then we had two back-to-back -back races of the pole sitter being optimal. And, uh, you know, we're coming off of Austin Hill. It's literally Austin Hill versus the field, and he keeps winning Daytona. And these these idiots who keep playing, 30% of them keep just winning. And they're like, that's the play. That's what you do. And I'm like, yeah, oh, my God. They, he can't keep getting away with it and stuff like that. And so, like, when you know, we just saw that happen uh, last night. We were entering another race where the pole sitter has been optimal and stuff. And so we're seeing that people are probably going to want to the, play the pole sitter in situations and, and yada, yada, yada. When we look at the... Uh, hog points that some other individual had used um but when we look at this it's basically just dominate it's basically uh, fast laps and, and laps lead points uh, distributed between um i'm pretty sure it's the top points like the top guy like leading all the laps getting some of the fast laps and the secondary the most expensive the secondary high score and yada 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 um when we look at the teams and drivers like we're very rarely seeing a bunch of ugly or like bad teams um and we're going to kind of talk about that when we look at the other uh, 500 and, and Daytona races and stuff like that. But when we look specifically at the drivers and stuff, like these are all good drivers, you know, people who are actually competent. You might be like, wow, you know, Ty Gibbs is absolutely dog trash. Like, why is he here? Well, he started 31st in a JGR car. Like, what are we talking about? Corey LaJoy, he like knows what he's doing. Like, come on. Like, when, when we look at these races and, and Atlanta specifically, it's turned into a, a situation where it's the good drivers. Like, when we look at people, and this is where where I stand, okay, I do not want to include Atlanta data in the Daytona and Talladega stuff, okay, but I want to look at the date, look at the data from Daytona and Talladega and eyeballing between the film study, seeing where people are running, seeing where they're running right before the, the big crashes happened, yada, 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 and we can tell, we can understand who the people are that have skill at the plate races. If they have skill and have shown skill and understand what they're doing at Daytona and Talladega, Atlanta is a place that they should be able to transfer their skill level on and above the field, okay? So when we look at these drivers here, a lot of the Hendrick cars get through. A lot of big teams come through. We see a lot of Joe Gibbs cars come through. We see guys who are maybe in lower equipment or slower cars and stuff, still doing well. Also, I, I, I had a bit of a discussion with 
uh, one of my guys that I talk about this with. And when we look at whether it's the truck series losing GMS or lo- not losing GMS, well, yeah, losing GMS, losing KBM and stuff, Inspire taking over KBM and stuff like that. Yeah, sure, we'd lose like the top teams, but there's teams that, you know, take that equipment and just kind of fill in the gaps here. But when we're, when we're at the bottom of the totem pole, Okay, the bad teams, the the bad equipment, the slow cars, whatever the case may be, that is my term for the bad teams, the shitters, whatever the case may be. If you are the like, like Cup Series specifically, okay, some people are like, hey man, Rick Ware Racing is is actually putting in effort. They're not running bad equipment, yada yada yada. Hey, Spire is like a real team. Hey man, when you know we we don't have like the double zero anymore with Derek Cope. We don't have uh, Live Fast. We don't have Starcom. We don't have uh, go fast racing. We, while it is true, we still we're still gonna have at the end of the year teams that are gonna finish thirtieth to thirty sixth, and those are the bad teams. Those are the shitters. It don't matter who they are, whether relative towards like the good cars, whether let me change that. Like F one has has ten teams, right? Well, Williams and Haas. Are the bad teams in F1, okay? Those are the shitters. Those are the bad teams. Like, you're fucking last. And I don't give a shit if you're, like, a multi-million dollar race team. You're still last in the standings, okay? When we're looking at the Cup Series, who is last in the standings? Who is last? Who is bottom of the totem pole equipment-wise? That's Rick Ware. That's Spire, no matter what you want to say. You know, whatever they're starting, like, it's still Spire. When we're looking at all the teams, okay? Like Hendrick, JGR, Penske... RFK, those guys are like top tier. Then we go like through the field and yada yada yada. And then you know who the, you know who's at the bottom? It's Stuart Haas, Rick Ware, Spire. Like those guys are fighting for last. Those guys are fighting for the back end of that. You can argue, you know, like certain teams that or certain crews that are with good teams. You know, the thirty eight Todd Gillen, he's kind of like bottom tier, like that. So like okay, so like. Yeah, sure. BJ McLeod is in a live fast car this week. He's starting. He's gonna like be the thirty seventh rate car. Yeah, he's a shitter. But there's still other bad teams in the back. When we're looking at who's been optimal in these and the teams that have been optimal, do we see bad race teams here? Like, look at this: Hendrick, Spire, Trackhouse. You just said Spire's a shit team. What's well, Corey fucking Lejoy, who's optimal at plate races like every fucking time we go because he starts in the rear and he's able to get through. Okay. Spire, Trackhouse, JGR, Trackhouse, 2311, Colley. Well, I bet you this was A.J. Allmendinger who was this in 2020 in the first race. Let's see. Uh, uh, starting position 22nd in 2001. We'll look at this in a second. That was probably, let's see. Uh, where is the starting position? We're looking for 20, maybe. Don't know what I'm looking for anymore over here. Oh, my lord. What position am I looking at? I just went blank. Uh, we're looking at oh, the seventh best driver, 2021. So top DQ points, seven. Like that. So that'll be, that should follow. This is out of order. Oh, God. Is Justin Haley. Oh, what a surprise. Hey, man, Haley's good. Like, what a surprise. Spire, Hendrick, Penske. Rick Ware, you know, RFK. When we look at this, look at the top 12 points in terms of teams they are, like, these are all, like, competitive teams. Like, and you might be like, you literally just shit all over Stuart Hosh. You, you haven't even mentioned Wood Brothers. Like, I mean, bro, look at also these teams compared to where they're starting. It doesn't matter the driver, the equipment. Like, we, in my opinion, I view this as, like, the good teams, the good cars can work. No matter where they're at, like we can, I don't want to play bad teams unless they're starting dead last. I want to primarily focus on good drivers that are that that are just going to excel at Atlanta, and I'll expand on that in a second. Like I, I don't think it's like rocket science when we're looking here. Uh, yet again, now I just made that comparison with like, yeah, I want to look at who's good at Tal- Talladega and Daytona. I don't want to use. Atlanta in that data pool because I feel like Atlanta race is completely different as I've said in the last two videos uh, And we'll get to that in, in in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and look at these races here So we look at this and this is your last four optimals Okay with the DraftKings points where they started how they scored and everything so if anybody's just here for that Here's this for you. I think this is not yeah sure it's good to know it, this ain't the fucking end-all be-all in my opinion when we're this 
not really my my cup of tea when I'm comparing these things here. The things that I want to focus on primarily will be uh, talked about in a second. This is the breakdown of the last four races for everybody who wants that and feels because sometimes you know in some some of these videos I like to just break it down really fast and maybe I don't want to go over this for fucking four hours and go through like how did Ross Chastain do in this race here like there's much more than just paying attention to how people scored in general um I have to worry about this in terms of making projections and making sure I'm not doing anything stupid but for the most part when we're doing a preview video it, it dude, it's not that crazy man okay when we're here you can see the optimal you can see how everybody scored so like I've been looking at this and, and messing with this for a while and looking around and you know like I said I got this in my head you know during the off season because Atlanta in my opinion was the main thing I needed to fix I wanted to figure out I wanted to put focus on specifically because I'll be at Atlanta this week okay so if you see me feel free walk up to me shake my hand I'd love to say thank you for watching my stuff too uh, projections and stuff will, be, will still be made, but like knowing that I'm going to be in Atlanta, I, I want to do all my research, you know, during the off season this week, do all that before, have an idea of where I want to go. When we're looking at, uh, if you guys remember this that I showed in the last video, so this was me looking at, why is that there? Get that off. Hold on. Get that off there, whatever. Um, this is the starting positions for each driver, okay? This is the average finish for Atlanta. Okay, this is the average finish for Daytona. This is the average finish of these Atlanta races and these Daytona races specifically. And if you want to know why I'm using this, yet again, watch the other videos. Don't have to repeat myself. I don't feel the need to do that. So my initial take was this should have a pretty good indicator of who was optimal and who wasn't in these situations. When we're looking at optimal lineups in like a race from like 2010, Okay, there's a lot of caveats and things that we need to be aware of, and we can argue of how you'd want to use it, how you wouldn't want to use it, and things of that nature. Now, I understand we're missing out on fast laps. I understand that the fields are bigger. I'm okay with that, like, being included in these, because these are just, like, I just wanted more data points to look at specifically. So, like, if you aren't happy with, like, hey, these races only have 200 laps, and I kept on saying 400 laps in the last... Two videos, I think. I meant 400 miles at Atlanta. Um, but if you want to, like, convert, like, these laps, I've mentioned how to do that. I've mentioned all the uh, weaknesses uh, that you have when possibly doing something like this with races that had either more drivers or not scoring fast laps and yada, yada, yada. But the main thing, the two main things that I was thinking of um, when I was looking at this as, like, big negatives when I was building this next point that I'll show you was the fact that we had 30 we had 43 cars and we would have a lot of place differential coming through specifically in the 500s yet again we come up they come off the duels some guys clear backup cars etc cetera, etc cetera. when i was looking at stuff i was thinking of well the data might be skewed towards the back for two reasons one because there's more cars so there's more opportunities for guys in the back to score well because vice versa we have we've max we've had at atlanta's 37 we've had 43 in old 500s and we're going to probably see a lot of guys in the 30s and the back 30s because it's good teams going to backup cars being scored from back there. And or, um, you know, fast laps aren't being necessarily inc included. So like PD is probably going to be weighed a little bit more and stuff. So like those are the, the two things I was like, or at least I'm explaining that I'm aware of when I'm looking at this stuff. So it might not be perfect and we can go through it and, and kind of talk about the ifs and, and buts. But what I wanted to do was specifically look at what optimal lineups looked like in those older races, okay? Because when we're entering this week, there is a real chance that people are going to build with, like, the pole sitter or, like, they're going to chase some guys up in the front and then just stack the back completely or, like, focus on... I. For me, in my opinion, if people were legit just using, like, a sample size of these four races... These guys can go any direction, man. Like, it, I don't know what the hell the public is going to do. But I'm trying to find places where I can get more data points and then look at stuff. So when I looked at optimals, okay, so these are the actual optimals for the last four races. Correct. Like, for Atlanta. These are highlighted here. I left this here. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Secondly, uh, because I was originally thinking, oh, I can make another column over here. And I'll just write down, you know, optimal. How many times each position was optimal. Didn't want to do that for all the things I just stated 
And I feel like that would skew people to think that certain positions are better. Okay. Whereas I think the average finish of like, I think the average finish that I have here displays that and it might not pin people down to certain positions. I feel like, cause I was going through and I'm like, well, it's going to make certain positions look better. Whereas like, like f for example, I was afraid we'd run into a situation like this one. What which one is it? I'm I'm thinking of one of these. I was going through. Um, forgive me while I think it's either the 2002 summer race or the 03 500. I think it's this one because when we look at the 2002 Pepsi 400. Sixth place is, that's two, give me a second. Two, it might not be this one. I think it's this one. We're going to look through these together real fast. Kind of explain why, why I did it like this. So when we're looking at this one here, we're looking at optimals. This is, that's the wrong, which one am I on? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, sorry. It's because I was looking at this like hours ago and I, and I came back and I, I, I couldn't figure out what the hell I was trying to explain or the point I was trying to make. I remember now. So when we're looking at like an example like the 2002 summer race, okay, and the nuances of what we're doing. So I highlighted like the optimal line of the 2002. So it's the guy who was optimal in 2002 was, let's bring this back. We had the guy starting 37th, 7th, 41st, 30, so your top six are started 37th, 7th, 41st. 20th, 25th, and 20 and, and 42nd, right? And you, it still might not be this one. I don't remember exactly. Hold on. <laughs> okay, yeah, dude, sorry. I was having a stroke. I was trying to figure out. I was trying to, uh, in my head, remember exactly, but I was trying to figure out, like, the nuances of why certain play. Like, okay, that was the whole point I was going to make. Like, if I was removing plays that technically couldn't exist today, right? Removing, like, 43rd, 42nd, 40th, or 41st, 40th, and stuff like that, you'd run into situations where, like, it would move um, optimal lineups to be more centralized in the starting order. Like, for example, Mark Martin in this race starting 18th, Todd Bodine starting 24th. These guys are technically not in your six, in your six optimal lineups, but, like, this is a build that would most likely work today since we don't have all these positions back here coming through to finish in the top 10. Mark Martin... Finishing fifth, starting from 18th, makes a lot of sense. We would have the guy starting 24th, which was Todd Bodine. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Todd Bodine just misses out on the optimal lineup because we have, you know, a guy in, in the 41st position technically beat him on place differential, whereas this 52 would most likely work in today's stuff. So that's why I didn't go ahead and make a, a thing here with... Um, saying that like, oh, this position has been optimal this many times and stuff like that, because I figure or I thought that some people might be, um, directed poorly or like overvalue place differential. When you start looking at how many times they've been optimal, when we look at the massive place differential that comes through in these older races, like, look at all, the, look at all these fucking guys in the back, man, coming through. Like, these are like the last four guys coming through a ton. Okay. Which, if you're just glancing off of, like, hey, man, modern-day super speedway racing, am I right? Yeah, but, like, these are all, like, good. Look at all these. Yeah, sure, they're finishing well. But, like, these are all great, like, actual teams that, like, actually have brains and, like, good cars. Like, are there any, like, actual shitters in these lineups? No, there's not. Dude, Ray Everham was not a shitter in 03, like, in 04. Like, when we're looking here, these aren't bad teams. You can argue, you know. The seven car for, for, for Jimmy Spencer was, but like, and even the, the 54 for Todd Bodine. When we start going through, like, Bill Davis, this is before Bill Davis truly fell off, just coming off of a 500 win. They had a fantastic uh, plate package, in house, um, you know what I mean. Like, they, these, these teams weren't bad. Are we seeing, like, any bad teams here? Maybe Ganassi. Okay, you can argue, like, one, two coming through and stuff here, but, like, when you're looking at these teams, like they're these teams aren't bad teams, man. These are not bad crews. Okay, you can uh, Larry McCure, McCure, more McCure, Mc, you know what I mean? The fucking four car. Like these aren't bad teams coming through, my guys. Even in in all these races, place differential, whatever, 
bad teams are not coming through. We have the shitters like not working and stuff. And so, um, I think people might might overvalue the the true like starting from the back guys, especially coming off of you know Daytona and how much they've been wrecking. When we're actually looking at teams dis- or got drivers, despite the fact with all the place differential that would come through back in these days, if if DraftKings was scoring stuff. We still have a ton of guys up front leading laps, being optimal. First place is being optimal quite a lot. Guys in the top five are being optimal quite a lot. When we're looking at races that look like these here, which that is a difficult sentence to finish because all these are pretty much drastically different, okay? You know, these two are different from these two. If you're building this way each week, you didn't cash in three of them, okay? If you're building this way, In, I mean, I don't even think both of these would cash well in each other's race. You know, this one is not going to work in any of these races because more place difference comes through. So, like, when you're looking at the small sample size of Atlanta we have now, like, I think we're running into trouble. That's why I wanted a bigger sample size. I wanted to look at races that race very similar to what Atlanta is doing here. And so now that all that's out of the way, okay, we've been here for 20 minutes, and I've just basically been backing myself up into a corner and be like, I don't know if you want to trust this, but what all the stuff I've been looking at looks like this and stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera. So when we're looking at older races and how I think optimal lineups are going to come through and how I want to build and good cars and stuff, this is kind of how I want to build my lines. Like I said, I understand that we have more positions here. Yet again, didn't take those out, just took the, the hypothetical DraftKings points that came. But... When we look above 37 points, okay, 37 starting positions, which is on your screen right here, this is still a lot of guys coming through, man. This is a lot of plays coming through that are not from the back. I mean, this is a lot of people coming through that aren't in the back of the field. I mean, man, dude, this is not, this ain't like fucking Daytona and Talladega, man. I ain't including this fucking track when I'm looking at those. Okay, we got, we got guys in the 40s. We got guys in the back half of the field. Okay, that, that is true. But man, when we look at the 20s, 20s are coming through. A lot of good teams in the teens and low 20s. A lot of good drivers in the top 10 showing that it is possible to be up there if they know what they're doing. What teams were up here that knew what they were doing? It was the powerhouse organizations. It was the guys who had been showing up well. It was the Hendrick cars coming off of one, two at Daytona. Regardless, like, I don't give a fuck what they did at Daytona, but I'm just saying, Hendrick Power, man, like, these guys know what they're doing. Chase Elliott's hometown. Like, JGR, gonna be a good team. They know what they're doing in the draft. These guys, these drivers are good at what they're doing. Uh, you know, Denny Hamlin, uh, like all the good guys that we've talked about week in and week out. This is basically just like um, continuing. Let me move a little bit to the right. Show you these. Like, you know, in the race that Dale died in, 19th and 27th, 30th, it was a bit of a wreck fest. We all know they wrecked down, down the back straightaway that started on the back straightaway when Tony Stewart got turned sideways on the back straightaway, car number 20. I always forget how Mike says it. But uh, long story short, and so I was looking at this, and I was like, well, damn, you know what? Th- this does still line up with the average finishes that we've been pulling here. And we're seeing that the average finishes, yes, they're not drastically terrible from the back. But the guys who are finishing the best are coming from the, the 20s, the teens, and guys starting in the top 10, man. So when I'm looking at the Cup Series, okay, when I'm looking at the Cup Series for this race... This is kind of how I want to approach it, leaning off of this data set, this, this, you know, bit of a, bit of a woggy data set because we're using, I'm using shit from like 20 years ago. Okay. But that's, that's kind of what I want to lean to. That's, that's the direction of Atlanta that I want to chase on. Do we think, do I think it's going to be a wreck fest at Atlanta, like a true wreck fest? I don't think so from actually being there, looking at, seeing other people run, like even when they wreck, you don't collect like the entire fucking field. Uh, they typically, if it's in the corner, they're sliding up into the wall and they're really staying there. Most people are able to avoid them. Um, when we're looking at kind of where we want to approach it, guys starting up front and teens in the twenties, the way, not that I would run an optimizer, but like, 
unlike Daytona, unlike these other weeks, man, this is one where I'm like, I kind of want a guy in the top 10, probably two to three between like 10th and 20th, probably two to three between like 20th and 30th. And then like, maybe like the obvious, like place differential play. Like I I'm down to chase chalk here. I'm down to chase the good guys, man. If we get like, I don't know, Alex Bowman blowing a tire and qualifying and starting 33rd. I'm going to fucking hammer Bowman, man. Like, I'm going to hammer the good guys, you know. Uh, but I I don't think this is as simple as, you know, play the pole sitter and then play five guys in the back of the field. I don't think it's that at all. I think this is a very wide open race in terms of what the optimal can look like when we look at races that were very similar to it. Like, what races here look similar like this is range shortened like okay man that's kind of bullshit like can't that's never data we would ever use like who who uses range shortened races are you kidding me now we're gonna use it for that because we only have four races nah when we look at these three here these three do we see similar builds like that from this i would say so stuff certainly close to it stuff certainly there when we look at top 10 let's just highlight the top 10 we're typically seeing two guys from the top ten. Actually, it's ident- it's I, it's I, uh, I, it's exactly two guys in the top ten. One, two, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 two, two. Actually, technically three. Oh fuck, I fucked that up. Um, three, two, one. Okay. Eh, whatever average that is, and like I said, that's not including. That's also because place differential is being weighted very heavy here. You know, if you do, if you. If, you, if we remove some of these guys, we're probably going to see more people who finish like this individual who finished third. How in like this, the uh, the 2008 Daytona 500, the guy who started six, how much, how, how did he miss out on the optimal, like by how much? So we're looking at 2008 Daytona 500. The guy who started six was Tony Stewart. Leads 16 laps, no clue how many fast laps he gets. He gets beat out of, by a place differential play that is no longer physically possible. By David Rudiman. So we are looking for one, two, three, four, five, six. Tony is two out of that. Okay. You know, we we're, we're kind of hesitant on, on wanting to pay attention to that much place difference coming through because these guys are starting last, backup cars, et cetera, et cetera. So like more than likely, probably sixth place is optimal here. Four or seventh place is optimal here. Seventh place is optimal here. Fighting to be optimal here. How you know, this guy starts seventh, uh, 2007 Daytona 500 guy who starts seventh. How close is he? So 2007 guy who starts seventh, Jeb Burton. Uh, why is he pushed out? Scores 45 points, uh, 42nd, 39th, 41st, 38th. Okay. We look at realistic guys who started up front or at least like guys who were, you know, having a good, decent running position. Like he's currently 12th right now. Move some of these guys. He moves like probably tenth, eighth, ninth best scorer on DraftKings. Like, we need to be aware of that. Okay, when we're looking at top twenty, how many guys in the top twenty? I mean, brother, man, we're looking at old. We're looking at New Atlanta. Three, two, four. Three, two, four. What is that? Three on average. Okay, three, four, zero, two, one, four, zero, three, four, one, three, uh, four. Like, I don't, I don't think it's fucking crazy, man. I really don't think it is crazy leaning into this data and having your lineups that you end up building, uh, oh fuck, end up building look like this, man. You know, kind of like the Joker when he's, uh, when he's talking with, um, the mob in the Dark Knight Rises or whatever one Heath Ledger is the Joker in and he's talking to, uh, like the mob guys, and he's like, Batman has no jurisdiction. He'll find this guy, and he'll make him squeal. Like, I know the squealers when I see them. And and I'm like, man, when I look at lineups that, are, that I, that I want to build towards Atlanta and what they're going to look like, it's, it, it's stuff that looks like this. And uh, that is probably the last I'm going to be able to talk about the Cup Series. And I'm finding that the trucks and Xfinity are, are very similar. I'm at least in, in terms of this type of building style is kind of what I want to lean into. 
But this is uh, pretty much my approach when it comes to Atlanta this weekend. I want to try and make sure that I, I don't think I'm using entirely stupid data here. I don't think this is like a bad direction to lean into. And I think this is, uh, this is kind of what I want lineups to look like um, in terms of being optimal and stuff. So, uh, yet again, thank you, for like, thank you for being here. If you've liked or enjoyed this, please uh, leave a comment or, a, or just like the video or whatever um, if you want to support me. Uh, and use my projections. Uh, hop in the Discord and see all the other great stuff we have here at True DFS. You can join uh, at the link in the description below, truedfs.com. You can either join the NASCAR package uh, by itself, or you can just join the all sports and etc. 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 And yeah, you know, I mean, you know, what I, I'm terrible at like ending this stuff. Anyway, that's that's my uh, Atlanta Daytona uh, 20 year old data rant part three. End of story. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.